This fourth tutorial in the Text Tool group will show you how to create a separate file for your copyright. In this fourth uh, tutorial in this series on using the uh, Type Tool or Text Tool, uh, we're going to uh, learn how to create a separate document that carries your copyright. And from the third in the series, you learned if you make your copyright into a separate document, you'll never have to worry about what the resolution of your image file is. Because once your copyright is saved as a PNG file, it no longer is dependent on point size. It's now a pixel size file. So it's very helpful. Uh, the only time I would think that you would uh, type directly on an image is if you're making a unique poster where you're not going to repeat it. But with copyright, you might as well create, you can make several styles of copyright files and use the one you like, but original typing on an image does require that you pay attention to the resolution of that image file. So we will go ahead and create the document, which is by far the easiest way to put a copyright on your images. So we're going to start by making a new document. So if you'll go to File, down to New, to a blank file, you'll get this window. This is where you determine uh, many things about this original new document. And I have recommended that we're going to be putting it on relatively small files that are put up on the internet. And therefore, we don't need to have a huge document, and which is going to be too big for the image. So I've chosen uh, to make the width and the height set to 600 pixels. If your window is showing the unit of inches, just pull down the menu and change it to pixels. That's how we size an image file. So 600 in the height, 600 on the width. And um, as you have learned that um, the resolution uh, of an image file that is saved as an image file is doesn't make any any difference with resolution. Resolution is only important when you're preparing an image for printing or if you have an image to which you are going to directly type text which is in uh, points rather than pixels. So this is simply going to be a file which will be a, a pixel image. So it doesn't matter what you have for resolution. You can just leave it alone. And uh, if you want it uh, to match your file so that the size is similar to what you have, then find out what all your image files are, what their resolution is. It's usually going to be something that was set by the camera. So take a look at images right out of your camera. Look at the image size menu and see what resolution your camera uses. And then I would set this file to be the same. And uh, in mine, I have a Canon, and my resolution of my Canon images is always 240. So if I set it for 240, they're going to be more relative in size as I look at them. Not really important. But this is important. We want the background content of this file to be transparent. When you type directly on an image, all that went on the image was the text. And around it, you could see your image. Well, if you create a file and the file is white and you add text to it, you're always going to have a white background to that copyright file. And you certainly don't want that. So be sure that this new file has the background contents as transparent. Once you've done that, click OK, and you'll get that 600 pixel by 600 pixel file that is transparent in its background. Now, we're going to type onto it just what you typed when you were creating the copyright file, which was part of the second lesson. So, if you will come in and get your text tool, and you can use whatever type of font and size you want. I'm going to keep the same one I used before. I'm going to drop the cursor on this document, and because I'm working with the left justification, I drop the cursor near the left side and the text will flow toward the right. The first thing you do is remember how to get the copyright uh, 
image. I'm going to go and let you re be reminded of that copyright method in case you haven't remembered it. Mac users simply hold down the option key and type the letter G. But if you're on Windows, remember the easiest way to remember this is to hold the function key, the alt key, and type 0169. If you learn that one procedure, it'll work on every computer you're on that has a Windows operating system. And it will provide you quickly the copyright symbol within the font that you have chosen to use. So the copyright symbol will look different in different fonts, which is partly why this is a good way to get it. It will blend in the style of your font. So we can go back now uh, to where we were. And I am going to drop the text tool. And then I'm going to enter my copyright symbol, whatever method you use. Then I'm going to type the year, 2018, and the way you want your name to appear. Oops. And uh, this is now a separate layer. If you look at your layers panel, whenever you enter the type tool, you will always have your type on a separate layer, which means you can completely edit it. If you make any mistakes, you'll notice I made a mistake typing. I just corrected it. So I'm going to accept it. Return key, enter key, or green check mark. And once I've done that, um, I uh, am ready to get rid of all this extra space around it. I'm going to take the crop tool, and I don't want any, or, oh, I'm sorry folks, if you've got a new version of Elements, it seems to always choose a, a box to put, which you can change, you know, you can move the corners. I want to draw my crop box, so I simply use the cancel symbol. I still have the crop tool. And now what we will do is go to the upper left, a little distance away, hold down your mouse button, and draw your cropping box to be pretty close to the size of your thing. If you didn't get it close enough, you can change it a little bit here. I don't need to have a lot of extra space around it, as long as it contains my copyright. Once I've cropped it, I click the check mark or enter or return. And you now have a copyright file. The next step is extremely important. If you want to maintain the transparency around your text, you must save this as a PNG file, not a JPEG. So if you will go up to File, Save As, change the format from Photoshop down to PNG. This is the format that maintains transparency. And then name it, something which will make it easy to find. I usually put the copyright symbol and my name. And it's being saved as a .png file. And in this case, it's going to go back where I last was working, which is in the copyright practice images. You can go ahead and uh, create this on the desktop or anywhere you want it. Click Save. And it tells me if I have already saved this several times today, so I'm going to have to use Replace. If it's the first time you created it, you don't need to. And please check this option bar so that you have no compression and no interlace. You'll get the best quality by doing that. Click OK, and you have created the uh, file which will be used to place copyrights. Now that you have a copyright file, and it's a PNG file, I want you to notice that the open version of it is not a PNG file. When you save something to a PNG file, it doesn't change the open file. It saves it as PNG. So to use it properly, we want to close this version. Uh, there's no reason for you to keep it unless you would like to go back in and edit your copyright. If you want to, then save it as a PSD file, uh, and then it will be editable. So let's just do that. Save as. Be sure the format is Photoshop. You can still call it whatever you called your other one. I'm putting the copyright in my name. Now, it's not going to risk the other because this is a PSD file. Okay. 
So I now could open the PSD file and edit the copyright because the copyright is on the top independent layer. Good thing to know. So now let's close it. And we're going to open an image and place it on that image. So let's go over to the file open. Any image will work. I'm going to go back to my old plain ordinary coral garden. That was the original version. And I want to apply the copyright. So I need to open the PNG file. So I'm going to go to File, Open, find the ML Frost PNG, not the PSD file, the PNG file, and open it. Now I have two files open, and I have to remind you again that if you're working on a tab, all you do is pull those files off the tab so you can see both of them in your workspace. And then to make this go into my image, all I do is take the Move tool. Grab one of the letters that I can grab and drag it anywhere I want to. It'll come in and then I can move it. And if I think I need it a different size than I created, if there's a minor change, I'll get the diagonal arrow and stretch this and make it a little bit larger. If I had a, a very huge file for some reason, and I urge you, please don't put a huge version of your file up on the internet. If it's stolen, it's useful. Keep it small. And providing it's small, you won't have to do much sizing. If you discover this looks minuscule, I'm telling you that the file you've got open is a much too large file to put on the internet. It's a good test to be sure you've sized it right. And you can still adjust it slightly. So I accept it, enter, return, or green check mark, and then you know what I can do. That layer one, which is the copyright layer, I change the opacity if I want to diminish how bright it is. And remember that I, at this point, I can't edit what's in the copyright. You'd have to get the PSD file to edit what's in the copyright, but I can move it and resize it as well as change the opacity. Thank <laughs> you.